So when uh, we see the characters um, for the first time, you all um, checked into the Jade Baobab. And I think we um, established way back that you're all sleeping in synthetic baskets. I don't know if you remember, but uh, they, they are these coffin hotels made from um, some synthetic material. Every member of the um, of the caravan uh, has their own um, little compartment. And um, so let's start with, I don't know, with Sarko maybe. Uh, Sarko, can you, uh, Nathan, can you describe your character and how does it look like when they climb out of this very claustrophobic coffin hotel? Uh, is, this isn't in the caravan. This is like in Jade Yeah, yeah there, there are these two uh, biomechanical trees and then there's mm -hmm. uh, like a rope bridges and from, from, uh, from some of the um, part of the trees, they are hang uh, these uh, synthetic baskets um, that you occupy for the night. Gotcha. Um, Sarko is a uh, jackal-headed purple folk, um, and he is outfitted in sort of like a, you know, um, uh, what I always think first of as like a speed suit from Venture Brothers, but like one of those like gas station attendant full body coveralls. Um, yes. Grease stains, big thick, not combat boots, but just like heavy work boots. Um, you know, kind of kind of like, uh, you know, just like a, a stereotype of an, a certain kind of like auto mechanic. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's his look. Um, on your overall, do you have like a badge? Because you also, uh, I, uh, I remember that you were part of the sanitary clan at the Red Bear Village. Do you remember that detail? Yeah, that they welcomed me in, sure. Um, so how does the patch look like on your overall? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, what location was that at? I forget which one. Was uh, that here? That was at the Red Bear Village. Mm. And it was the clan of sanitation, not the the clan with the highest reputation, I would say. Yeah. Um, I think that it's um, it kind of looks like a stylized sewer grate crossed with two with two cross brooms. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, all right, thank you. And, and you you, um, you have obviously a dog hat. Mm -hmm. Here, um, I'll flip real quick. Here, let me. This yes. little icon that I whipped up. Awesome. And you're climbing uh, out of your, you're scrambling out of your, uh, of the basket. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have another canine. Can I say that? Um, so, Chris, can you um, describe Saffron? Saffron um, used to be a machine person um, who is still a machine person in spirit, but instead of being in a humanoid body is now in a cybernetic prairie dog body with two brains and extensible arms and legs um, and wears a kind of oversized robe cloak to try to hide their appearance a little bit. So it's kind of like when they have their legs extended, it's kind of like, you know, three toddlers stacked on each other inside a trench coat <laughs> pretending to be a person. Awesome. Um, and, and for you, climbing out of the synthetic basket is, is a bit easier because of the extendable links, obviously. Yeah, I can kind of like reach up and grab something. Cool, thank you. And um, then we have um, Nida. Uh, Pocket, can you describe Nida and how she um, climbs out of the synthetic basket if it's okay with you i have a sneaking suspicion she was probably sleeping in the truck yeah yeah that's totally okay for me with me okay um because that way she gets to stay a lot closer to her guns and grenades and you know everything else that she seems to truly love it, she is a woman with very dark skin she has spent a lot of time in the sun and it clearly shows 
She, her face is weathered. She has black hair and is usually clad in a cloak and some drive weave armor. And the cloak manages to conceal a surprising amount of the weaponry that she usually carries around on her body. And there is a substantial amount of it. She is very much somebody who does not want to get killed for lack of shooting back. Uh-huh. And um, I wonder, Azure, given the fact uh, that you are a very large person, would you even fit into these synthetic baskets or did you sleep on the truck as well? Are the baskets form fitting? Like, do they stretch? To, I think they like they it, do. It can accommodate skinny people, heavy people, tall people, short people, kind of like cocoons them. Yeah. I so like I, the idea. I, you know, uh, I'll have figured that out and I sleep in the baskets. And how does uh, Azure look like? Uh, hold on one second. My son's fighting video games. So I'll be right back. I'm going <laughs> to just close the door. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so to, to describe the jade baobabs, there are two um, baobabs, baobab trees. They're pretty tall, like 40 meters, I think uh, I remember reading. Uh, and they are um, biomechanical in nature, which means they have a mechanical part, which is thriving and maybe even growing. Um, but then there's also the um, the biological part, and that seems to be rotting and dying. Um, so yeah, Azure, can you uh, of Ape? Can you um, you know finish the description of Azure? Yeah, uh, Azure um, is uh, Azure. Uh, she used to be very stylish, like in a in a mid century modern way. Um, however, since uh, since uh, her tr- since she ate a bunch of uh, she got corrupted by biomechanical eggs. And uh, she has been growing e- ever since. Uh, she's definitely, initially, uh, she was worried that she was on that Akira uh, track. <laughs> so, um, but we fixed, you know, we got it handled. Uh, it's, it's the, the growth has slowed down. But now she is an incredibly large, uh, very strong woman. Uh, would you say she's like, is she China mode or is she more China mode? Or beyond that, like is she getting to She Hulk mode? I think she's getting slowly into the She Hulk form. Right. So, so she is like an incredibly ripped woman in, uh, you know, um, in, uh, in in like this kind of cobbled together road warrior type armor, and um, <laughs> you know, she's seen a lot, so she looks a little haggard. Because mm-hmm. she just kind of kicked, uh, kicked some highly addictive drugs. So mm-hmm. she, like she got big dark circles under her eyes. She's like, uh, you know, she she's still kind of shaking that off. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, she's got a little bit of meth meth girl vibe to her too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I forget to mention that both Azure and Zako. Um, it's a coincidence, but they both have um, a bone and wire salamander, and I wouldn't be surprised if they they too have become friends during the travels. Or maybe not. Who knows? Maybe they uh, they fight. Um, but um, let's us start with Nida. So Nida, you've spent the night outside. Uh, uh, well, inside the uh, inside the auto wagon. Uh, And the auto wagon is parked um, next to a floating barge, which is pretty um, luxurious, I would say. So it's a it's a floating barge. It must have some kind of an anti stuck force um, engines. Uh, It has some kind of um, yeah, I don't know, like tent type canvas uh, structure that um, is on top to keep people and goods dry. Uh, and you have seen that there were four um, caravan guards and um, that when you wake up, um, one of them already is uh, awoken and they stand outside uh, drinking a coffee um, that they made over a, a campfire and smoking. And, um, you know, when you when you wake up, they, they nod to you as one 
fighter nods to the other. Uh, don't suppose I could get a cup of it? I haven't brewed my own yet. Yeah, why not? Come over. And I will. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll just because. I mean, this is this is courtesy. I'm going to make sure that. I'm not going to leave all my weapons in the truck, but I'm going to make sure that all, most of my weapons at least are visible so they can, you know, they can see if I'm reaching for something that would disturb them. Mm -hmm. um, you do see that um, I need to give them a name. Hold on a second. Um, Rainbow Lenders. Oh, we do Travelers. That's also cool. Hold on a second. Other Voyagers. Um, just grab a random name. Um, Girondo. Um, so they're called Girondo. Um, and um, I think they are, uh, let's say they are Redlanders. Um, and they have one, um, they have one prosthesis. Prosthesis? Prosthesis? What is uh, it? Prosthetic. Like, Prosthetic. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. What is the prosthetics that they have? It, it's it's some uh, like old fashioned, um, you know, I don't know, with pistons and stuff. It's it's not the high end biomancy stuff that the people in the Jade Barbab have. Mm. In that case, I think this is a bulky prosthetic leg. Mm -hmm. That's an actual prosthetic. It's not intended to give a performance enhancement. It's you lost a leg in combat or in an accident or something, and this exactly. is the best we can do for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, you can see that they like massage their um, their prosthetic leg a little bit, um, and then it, you probably brought your own cup as is um, you know customary. Usual. Yeah. customary. Um, and they uh, they pour the coffee, uh, and they look over the the, the auto wagon. Uh, Redliner design, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, we picked it up a while back. I mean, it's you know how a lot of caravans can go. Sometimes you have a vehicle like yours, and I gesture to the luxurious floating barge. And Not sometimes, mine. well, the one you're working on, you know, mm -hmm. that goes. and then other times you've got what we've got. And I point to the bone wagons and the horse carts <laughs> and the trailers and our really janky caravan that's obviously been cobbled together from whatever we managed to find wherever we found it. Well, at the moment, there's just the, the Red Lander truck, but that is that's um, right. the bone wagons yeah. are ahead. Yeah, 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 but but still, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, some kind of road warrior design. So you have this mm -hmm. plush red uh, interior with uh, um, the fuzzy dice and uh, the skull um, shift gear and stuff. Um, right. So, and they say, yeah, well, the floating barge. Obviously, I work here. Yeah, but it looks nice. I mean, do, do, you, do they at least give you a decent place to sleep? Yeah, I mean, um, former Toda is he's kind of an asshole, but uh, he pays well. You know, you know how, how these Green Greenlanders are. I mean, uh, he looks at the, the trailer behind the truck um, that is clearly Greenlander uh, cockflower design. I mean, you know these Greenlanders. They are a bit preachy, but no, they're not bad folks per se. Yeah, we just we actually just had to rescue a bunch of them. They keep on getting into trouble. I don't know. I they were trying to set up a settlement here. Can you believe it? Here? I mean, there's nothing here. They don't even have food. And the people, have you seen the people? They are all sick. They well, all have these. Here. This is this is comparatively nice. They tried to set up up north. And the gall grass craziness. Like between the gall grass and the garnet fort. I mean, Greenlanders. Um, are you sure they were settling? I mean, these people seem to travel a lot. 
just to make a, a dime. Listen, the ones we managed to recover were basically women and kids. Oh, wow. you know, if it had been like half a dozen people you know, like us, I, I would have wondered what were they after? But nobody in their right mind just takes women and kids out on some kind of scav run. I mean, they have this weird religion with, um, you know, if you're rich, you get richer. And if you're poor, you need to get rich. And I, 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 I'm not really listening. When he's preaching, I, you know, it's one ear in, the other way out. You know, it, we've got a cog flower who comes in and out and just kind of shows up here and there. And I tell you, I can't tell whether they're talking about profit or a profit. You know? That's the weirdest thing. I mean, what is it? Is it the guy? Is it the money? Is it, is both? it both? Okay, so you're chatting the guy up. Um, let's go back to the other three. So you, you the three of us, Azure, um, Saffron, and Sarko, you woke up. And what is your plan? You do know that, um, I mean, you have heard that the, the lawyer that is here in the Jade Bar, Bob, maybe wants to persuade the Greenlanders to be sold into slavery. Um, I don't know if that bothering you. Um, you also know that there are some weird changes in um, in government. Can you say that? So that, that the two normal leaders, um, sister, um, mercy is weakness and father, time has no purpose purpose is that they're both one is sick and the other is away um what do you do do you make market research do you want to work do you want to investigate i think saffron would probably try to chat with the cogflower mm -hmm. lawyer put put on Saffron's cogflower church hat that they haven't worn <laughs> for a while. Um, and bring the bullshit up to 11 and try to get a read on like mm -hmm. what he's actually up to and or like see if I, I can have some influence cool. on, on him and, potentially. Um, I mean, Azure and Sarko, I do remember that uh, one of you or even both you know the new ruler you know um he of the second hand um because at least azure um had the information about the the vile part that was in the root of the tree and and maybe zarko i'm not sure you find the the stem cells if you remember and it might be that um he of the second hand also pointed you that way because um He's part of the the clan that does the the, the research. Wait, there's a vial part here. I forgot that there was a vial part that you already found oh, okay. it was in, the, in the root of the tree. But what I'm trying to say is, do you join Saffron? Uh, do you chat up the um, uh, the new leader, or do you meet with Nida, or do you just do something else? And that goes I for think, both of you. Uh, I think I'll go talk to the new leader. Uh huh. And Sacco? Yeah, I was looking at the notes to try to figure out what uh, what the the Greenlanders is. That a caravan that you all like? We just saved them. Like ha like a couple of them were had been mutated into these like creatures, uh, but we saved a big chunk of them. There, like uh, as as Horse said. Uh, mostly women and kids, uh, mm -hmm. but we pulled them out of this. I forget what it was like. Some kind of oh, it was some cave I saw in a vision, is where mm -hmm. they were. Like some kind of Velma auto fact, artifact, wasn't it? It was like yes. sitting out, uh, you know, basically defenders. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, but to your question, um, so the, the, there are like nine Greenlanders, um, and they are um, half of them traumatized and malnourished. Um, and the, uh, your caravan saved them, 
Mm -hmm. um, but now Azure has read the mind of these uh, cockflower lawyer who seem to have some um, evil plans with them. Right, right. And and they were were they they were traveling to somewhere before like you know they had their misfortune or yeah they were they were traveling from um, I think the porcelain citadel uh, west I think that mm -hmm. there that next stop would have been um, the spectrum palace okay gotcha. But you can do something completely else if you say, um, you know. Totally. I, I, no, it's more like I'm, I'm wrecking my brains for, uh, you know, if it's a bad idea for them to stay here. And also if someone is trying to, you know, get the better of them, I'm just trying to think of alternatives to try to sell them on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't I don't have any ideas yet, but I'm, I'll be thinking of, on that as a, as a player here. Mm -hmm. OK, cool. So uh, let's. You froze. Let's start with uh, Saffron. So um, when you move through the um, through the Jade Baobab, um, you see that um, so the um, the place is illuminated by these tubes. Um, there are tubes that run through the the tree, and through the tubes there's some kind of um, like green, dimly green. Um, radiating fluid and that is the the illumination so it's everywhere where you go it's pretty dimly lit uh, also the connections between uh, the bigger rooms they're pretty claustrophobic they are very steep and very uh, narrow um, and uh, but you do um, know how to get to the um, it's a mixture between town hall and throne room and chapel, maybe where um, the uh, where the the leadership uh, resides. Um, but you actually meet um, when you move there. You meet the um, the Greenlander in the exhibition room, and the um, it's called the exhibitorium. Um, which is um, Scrimshaw paneled. Do you know what Scrimshaw is? No. I had to look it up as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those words. Is it like one. a type of, type of bone carving? Yes. Or like, yeah. Yeah. Like teeth okay. often? yeah. It's made from whale uh, bones, as far as yeah. I know. Um, one of those words that you hear but never really remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so. That that room is the pride of the Jade Baobab, um, and um, you can see like biomantic uh, experiments from the long, long ago, um, and uh, the um, Signore Formatore uh, is walking between the uh, exhibits uh, with. Uh, his, you know, arms folded behind his back and studying them. I mean, yeah, if Signore is here, I probably, you know, waddle up in my prairie dog body and introduce myself mm -hmm. yeah, he uh, he nods and um, he says well I'm Girondo Formatore um, you are a member of the the biomancy cult I assume no well you you fit just right in well Circumstances sometimes put people in odd conditions. Yes, the, the prophet has uh, mysterious ways in which he moves the people on their ways, on their paths. I like to think that 
I had more work to do for the church. And this, I kind of gesture down at my, my body and maybe like kind of shuffle my robe off a little bit to make it more obvious what's underneath. Mm -hmm. This was a form of providence that it wasn't time for me to stop yet. But you're still loyal to the church. Still loyal to making profit. Um, and uh, the senora makes the religious gesture that is, um, I don't know, probably counting um, banknotes or something. I was going to um, go something like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. I'm trying to, re I, I don't remember exactly. We visited a couple of chapels early on and I can't fully <laughs> remember what all the little, <laughs> the little flavor was, but. I think every um, chapter of the church has probably their own quirks. Yeah, and yeah. Gestures. Well, um, we have um, digged up gold here. Uh, since the new leadership, uh, people are much more open to selling their tech. Mm -hmm. And um, my um, financier, which is, you shouldn't talk out loud here, it's actually um, the, let's look at my notes, give me a second. Um, it is a bone kaolin two body. Um, you might have heard them, two princes that are pretty influential. And I feel if we, um, establish you know, a good relationship with them, the profit could be huge. I must admit, we don't have the best history with the princes. Well, they, they get a bad reputation, but um, they, their influence on the wastelands, on the grasslands, is um, beneficial, I think. There's there's a certain order, even if it's the order of the porcelain fist, if you will. Mm. I prefer this to chaos. There's no profit to make in chaos. Pure chaos, sure. A little bit of chaos, uh, chaos is an opportunity, I, I agree. Inserting your own chaos. Yes, it yes. often be very useful. In any case. We have not, we have not needed to do the dirty work of others. I to find about, our trip very profitable. Well, I mean, I prefer um, selling goods, buying goods, selling goods. Uh, now the offer of the, um, I, I see an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the princes look for bodies. And I've seen a lot of bodies. I'm pretty sure we can't uh, persuade the villagers to work for the princes. But the Greenlanders, what's in it for them? Well, they earn a um, a proper wage. Mm -hmm. They don't have to work as bodies. They could work as waiters and waitresses. Just as an aside, for, for him, it is obvious that you're part of the, the caravan that just arrived. Yeah, I am not. Yeah, yeah. Like my, the implications of me being like, the work we've done, the profit mm -hmm. we've made is I'm Yes, I'm okay. implying the the caravan that's funded by the church. So if you took, uh, if you could talk to the um, refugees, I will as well. I will, um, mm. but they might trust you more than me. Uh, yeah, I can have a 
have a chat with them. But even if that, um, you know, that opportunity doesn't arise, I think buying tech from the new leadership and selling them at the um, either uh, porcelain uh, palace, which is my, you know, which is my um, employer at the moment, or at the Spectrum Palace, maybe they mm. might, we might even get more. Who knows? I think is uh, is available, viable, uh, profitable way. Are you intending to head back towards the Porcelain Palace? Is that your yes? Oh. Uh, yes. Okay. So we're traveling in opposite opposite directions. That is a bit unfortunate, but. Hmm. Um, it's good to know because if there are if there are opportunities that involve going back to towards Porcelain Palace, they would be valuable to you. And if there are opportunities that involve going to the Spectrum Palace or further, that would be valuable to us. Well, the ways of the prophet um, are mysterious. Mm -hmm. And then he, he uh, turns around and looks at a. Um, like a vertebrae, distributed vertebrae machine consciousness or some other exhibition that is, um, the exhibit that is really weird. Um, so Azure, um, you are um, moving towards the throne room, again through these um, claustrophobic, for, for you especially, claustrophobic um, halls. Um, uh, and you end up in um, the town hall, slash throne room, uh, where I think we have established that there are these, um, I think uh, Nathan called them sort of bakta tanks that are drained. And there are these mummified elders from the from the long, long ago, which are the, the founders of the uh, Five Dog Corporation, Five Dogs Corporation. Um, and they are revered as kind of saints. Uh, and um, there's a um, uh, there's he of the uh, of the second hand, um, and uh, a couple of his advisors, and they they talk in hushed voices when you enter. Are they like looking at me, and then they they, they don't seem to be conspiracy. No, no, no. It's not that they are con in, a, in some kind of conspiracy. They, they are more in a uh, forget that about the hush voices. They, they are more in a discussion. One of them says, um, "I think that if the father would be uh, in normal health, he would never." And then another says, "Well, but he is not, and the sister is not here, and our people are in pain. So what should we do?" And then there's the whole discussion when you enter and they, they maybe one or two of them look back at you but don't really stop in the discussions right um i, I walk up to the uh to second i'm sorry what's the name second hand yes second hand and the second hand guy mm -hmm. uh who has all right uh, so i walk up Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go, go on. You walk to him, and I think he um, remembers you. Um, no, I ask him. Uh, uh, we have a weird lag. Uh, I will stop my camera, and then. Are you? Uh, I, th I think you're kind of. Yeah, I'm just stuttering. Okay. Cool. So I walk up to him and I tell him. Um, I ask him. Uh, am I interrupting? I'd like to speak to you about uh, some some uh, some happenings in, here in, in your in the Jade Baobab. Um, so he wants to, he starts to say something um, like angry. He says, "Who are you?" And then uh, he recognizes you, and he says, "Oh, um, what's your name, Azure?" Of course. Um, what do you want to talk about? Um, I, I I just like to know. Do you do you know of this? Uh, do you know of this man? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have the document open. What's the What's the slave guy's name? Uh, Formatore, the um, 
the Cockflow lawyer. Right. So I ask him, do you know, do you know anything of this uh, former Tula? Well, um, he looks a bit skeptical at you. Well, he's um, he's a businessman. Yes. Do you know? Do, do you know what his? Uh, um, do you know what his business is? Um, I mean, you know the uh, the crop flower um, people. They sell whatever they want to sell. I mean, in this case, um, uh, we sell uh, perspiration pairs, and once in a while, um, obsidian shards. That's what he. That's what you sell to him. Mm hmm. I see. Uh, and how often does he come through? Well. Um, it is actually um, the first time that he's here in an official capacity. Oh, so he's been here before as a, in a more of a tourist type uh, situation? And at least not um, serving his, um, his employer. Right. Um, is he known to uh, deal in people? In people? You mean in slavery? Yeah. Yes. Of course, of course not. We would never tolerate this. And we would not tolerate can slavery. Can I ESP on him? Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, you can also see that, All right. that he speaks, speaks up a little bit, um, so a bit louder to make sure that the others hear that. That that they, quote unquote, don't condone slavery? Yes, that they do. Con yeah, that they indeed. Right. So, so if I want to use my ESP, I forget. Do I roll for it or is it just a gimme? Uh, no, it, it is once a day you can use your um, your slot. Um, right. And, and I think you can, like, I can give you an uh, a choice. You can, like, just read whether or not he says the truth, and that is for free, or right. you can actually read his thought, and that would cost the slot. Right. I'll do the surface thoughts and detect lies. Mm -hmm. um, so when he says, um, of course not, that meaning that uh, he doesn't know that um, he might sell people, he's lying. Aha, uh -huh. I see. All right. Um, well, I say to him, well, th that's good to know. Uh, you know, um, we had heard some things. And uh, he seemed like a very upstanding uh, member of the Cogflower Caravan. So, uh, so uh, you know, I just wanted to clear that up. He seems to be, he seems to be uh, a very, um, uh, he seems to be a good guy to me. So, uh, but you never can tell. So thank you for your time. Uh, I won't bother you again for this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of, um, these sort of favors. But uh, perhaps we'll return again uh, as friends in the future and then i head out do you, do you think uh somebody could uh so he looks a bit skeptically narrows his eyes when he looks at you uh do you think somebody would read that um you have uh suspicions or is azure somebody who could hide her feelings pretty well uh Well, I think I'm in the secret Azure cult, so I yeah. think I can like I can pull off the subterfuge because like nobody knows I'm in a doomsday cult for this whole time. <laughs> that is actually true. Yeah, <laughs> I think you, you're used to um, hiding your feelings. Cool. Right. Um, so uh, and then you leave the the the, the throne room, so to speak. Right. Then I'm gonna head down to the to the trucks. And Sako, what are you doing? 
Yeah, so I don't know whether this is something that's been already covered before, so uh, let me know. Um, but if this hasn't been something that's like been been covered, uh, I think Sarko is maybe uh, hanging out with the Greenlanders and trying to figure out, like, you know, before they ended up, before they ended up, like, where uh -huh. did they think they were heading? You know what I mean? Like. If, if they didn't have a specific destination in mind, it's like, oh, we were, you know, we were traveling until we found yeah. X kind of place. Um, I think you whatever. can see them, um, you know, under a couple of these uh, synthetic baskets on a platform, and they're preparing the breakfast. And when you come over, they uh, they invite you in because you are the the savior, one of the saviors. Um, and um, uh, Ada, which is the uh, the leader of the the group. Um, explains that um, they had planned to um, do a profitable run between um, porcelain palace and the spectrum uh, spectrum palace uh, trying to sell their goods but they were um, they were trying to cross the glass bridge um, but they they saw that there were two toll stations and they thought when they to really establish a profitable run, they need to get a, a, like a really good uh, route from the two uh, places. So they thought moving uh, north around the lake would be um, cheaper. Um, and then when they crossed the uh, the Garnet Fort, they were dragged away by uh, Vols. Okay, so and they then, were. So, yeah, yeah. Go on. I was just gonna say. So they weren't heading west looking for a place to like settle i thought i had read somewhere that they were looking to settle some place someone was talking about like the gall grass or is that a different group of people yeah that is a, that was the um actually the purple folk settlers okay uh, and they they met their demise they um they were found dehydrated because the, the land is so dry there's some kind of mm -hmm. environmental hazards that they underestimated okay all right so so the greenlanders ultimately were just trying to make you know uh a, a commerce run there and back again. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, and, and if this is something that we've seen too, is the, uh, it is the, the Cogflower lawyers is, is that person traveling with anyone or are they alone? Um, they, they uh, travel with the, uh, the floating barge and the, mm. the four guards people. The four what? Uh, the four uh, caravan guards. Oh, gar caravan guards. Okay, gotcha. All right. Has um, I forget which which character has ESP. Is that Azure D? Yeah, that is uh, Azure D. Um, have you shared the you know the vision you got? Is that something we all know about the ill intent or not really? Um, I yeah, Azure. Uh, about the about the guys uh, uh, wanting to put them in slavery. Yeah, I shared that. Okay, cool. Um, gotcha. Well, you know, if if that's something I know, um, and as I'm, you know, passing, I'll try to in in a way that you know, without tipping the hand completely, I'll mm -hmm. just tell a couple cautionary tales of of people we've met on the road who thought they were signing up for one thing and found themselves, you know, in a very different situation. Um, cause they put a little too much trust in strangers who hadn't proven their worth. Yeah. Uh, but it's more like a general, general tales of be cautious. Yeah. Or, yeah. This, th yeah. Just because, you know, it's not necessarily, I don't, I don't want to, uh, necessarily tip anyone's hand too much, depending on what kind of angle the people are trying to work, but, you know, just kind of engender a healthy suspicion in them. Okay, cool. And and afterwards, would you go uh, oh, down? Mm -hmm. One and the last thing I'll tell them too is that in some of the in some of the cases, you know, sometimes it just comes down to strength in numbers. If there's enough of you, they can't force you to do anything. And then that's some of uh, Sarko's populist, uh, you know, <laughs> RLD unionist background talking uh -huh. and anarchist uh, talking. Yeah, you you see. I think it would be interesting to see what impact you have. Um, shall we do like a charisma roll? Sure. 
Uh, and I, I, I think in this case, advantage and disadvantage even itself out. Your advantage is that you're a savior and your disadvantage is that you are a gay commie bastard and they are obviously profit oriented. Right. Okay. Um, I need to roll under, right? Yes. Uh, in that case, I do not. I roll like an 18 in my Christmas and 11. Yeah, you see that they nod um, and one mutters, well, slavery is also a trade, sort of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and um, Saka, would you go uh, after that? Would you go down to meet with the others? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> is the Greenlander position that that slavery is its own kind of honest work? Like, <laughs> they've been that indoctrinated. I think their position is it is frowned upon, but better than stealing. Mm. Certainly, certainly better than unionizing, probably, huh? Exactly, it's better than unionizing. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's that's the real crime. Um, okay, so um, I, I think you all four meet up at the um, the impromptu breakfast um, at the floating barge. The the other uh, caravan guards have woken up, and there's uh, coffee going around and some kind of uh, burritos or whatever they eat. And so, what do you do when you're all together? So just to clarify, we all know that this Cogflower lawyer, uh, Formatore, is trying wants to sell the Greenlanders into slavery. Is that correct? Yes. So this is players, or yes, mm -hmm. characters. Yes, characters. Okay. Um, I think in the interim, I've just been chatting up the guards, trying to find out because I know they don't like him, but yeah, you know. If this guy wants to sell people into slavery, I'm also trying to figure out how much they get paid so I can offer a better deal to them and point out, hey, if this guy just kind of vanishes, you can just kind of keep the caravan, you know, <laughs> make the money on the side, you can do the right thing, you know, just, just so I can make that pitch. Of, yeah. This is good business for you guys. You mm -hmm. know, he can disappear and uh, you can keep it. You, you get the impression that they are pretty well paid probably maybe not by formator himself but uh, by his um, employer mm. um, and that they take a certain pride in their craft mm. uh, the way they, they talk about um, you know one of us never sleeps and uh, we always have like a you know a knife in the boot and stuff like that um, one knife amateur <laughs> and um, you know as much as they talk a, a little bit shit about formator who they don't really um, rank that high mm -hmm. um, they do take the job seriously you also don't get the impression by of the four people that they are slavers yeah okay so I think with that, I'm just standing there drinking coffee. Uh huh. The other Maybe three smoking five. something cigarette adjacent. Uh huh. I, I do remember that the the last time uh, you arrived at the Jade Baobab, you had some kind of dried uh, herbs that you would uh, give to the teenagers of the yep. plant. Because what teenager doesn't want to smoke? Mm -hmm. And so I just you know I nod to Saffron and Sarko and. Azure and wave him <coughs> over. Introduced him to Girondo. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a misfortune that Girondo has the same for, uh, first name as Formatore. But so we have Girondo, the, 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 the caravan guard, and okay, I did. Senor Formatore, who is the, the Greenland lawyer. Gotcha. So it's Signore Girondo or Girondo Formatore. Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, and uh, do you talk in private, the four of you, or do you don't mind if the the, the guards uh, hear you talk? I think we should talk in private. 
Oh, so I'll just kind of raise an eyebrow and excuse myself from Gerondo and mm -hmm. follow Azure. So um, I tell Nida, uh, the, the, the Jade Baobab knows all about the slavery. Uh, they, they pretended not to, but uh, apparently I can tell the difference. So mm. uh, secondhand uh, was, he put up a good front. But uh, I, I was able to see through it, and it turns out that uh, at least he's involved in some way, or at least aware of it. And, uh, you know, who knows who else is in it. I mean, he's, he's just recently taken over. He's been like kind of a secondary character this whole time. And uh, if he's in on it, maybe the, whole, maybe the whole crew is. Wait, you mean to tell me that he of the second hand has been second in command? And I just smile at Azure. I roll my eyes. <laughs> and I let out a chuckle. So you're not yet sure if we have to burn down the entire thing. Just one person in it. Uh, I think it'll probably have to be the whole, the whole hierarchy. You know, uh, from the sister on down. So, well, I don't think we want to get involved in this. I mean, I think we should keep the Greenlanders from uh, keep the Greenlanders from signing on and and, and getting screwed. But um, you you know my feeling, uh, yeah. I'm not that bit. I'm not that big on uh, rescuing strays like you are. Uh, so you know, I think we could just as soon head out. This is less rescuing strays and more preventing strays from being sent to the broken line. Big sigh. Fuck, you're right. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's loop back with Sarko and Saffron and, uh, and download all this information to them and see where they're at. Uh, I, I do want to, I do want to uh, get my hands in some of those porcelain pistols though. So I think definitely that should be, a high priority. Get some Listen, lockers. I these pistols are nice. I mean, if like I don't know how many of them we can get, but we should try to get some. Get well, everybody out. You have you have four, right? I only have the two. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, well. And I, I I pat each hip, and it's like, man, they're good though. Well, do that. Uh, and we could always give those walkers a paint job and then pawn them off somewhere if they if they get too cumbersome. Not There's like we haven't that. had to do that before. What's that? Not like we haven't had to do that before. And I right. just start sn snickering. All right. So I think uh, Saka and Saffron uh, uh, also joined the group. Right. So what do you guys think? Uh, how do you feel? The Greenlanders, like... Uh, it, I don't know if they were there to hear all of this, but uh, the you know the Jade Baobab uh, knows about the slavery, um, and they're pretending they don't, so they probably have a hand in it. Well, you did say it was just that you could only confirm he had the second hand, right? I mean, I'd want to know who all is in there before we burn the entire tree down, and maybe just have to you know drop a few of them out of the tree. I mean that that'd be nicer. Well, there's kids in there, I mean, so we can't just move the place. You that's know? true. We're going to have to do a surgical extraction, I think, yeah. if we if we decide. But if we kill all the if we kill all the uh, you know if we kill everybody in charge, there's going to be a power vacuum there. Then what happens? You know, I mean, then it's an anarchy, and they and they're fighting for scraps and brother um, killing brother and all that shit. Well. Maybe, but there is there, there might be another option. I, Ida seems like a fairly competent what? leader, right? Who? Ida from the Greenlander caravan. Gee, well, I don't know. I mean, Sarko, you, you have a lot of experience in this whole people coming together as one kind of thing. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, these folks care more about their 
you know, about their coin than they do about, it seems, their own uh, well-being. I think I think that these these ones might be hard to convince. They seem like the kind of sheep who walk into the slaughterhouse with their heads held high. I think at minimum, we went to all the trouble of finding and saving the Greenlander folk. At minimum, we should get them out of here and prevent them from being sold. One alternative is instead of attacking this on the supply side is we attack this on the demand side. Also, there's more profit on the demand side of this transaction. I mean, if you're asking me to kill porcelain princes again, I'm okay with that. Mm. It's certainly more work. Higher, 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 reward. higher reward. Sarko right. launches into a brief tirade about how when you know he accomplishes his life goals, there won't be any porcelain princes or any other <laughs> ab mortals to worry about. I didn't mention that when we were doing our, our character recaps, but Sarko's like personal quest is to try to discover the secret of immortality to either give it to everyone or ruin it for everyone. But he's probably the type who's like, I'm going to ruin immortality for everyone. That's too much power. Yeah. But maybe, maybe everyone gets it instead. I don't know if I, I worked at the broken line. Yeah. I have seen a lot of bad things. I have never seen anything that bad. So if you are asking me to go kill porcelain princes, I will enthusiastically draw every single weapon I have and not stop using them until they are pulp. So if that if that's our plan, Saffron, I'm and I just give two thumbs up. I mean I nod. Also I thought thumbs up. Because the people here gestures broadly, and I think like my arm, like I expand my arm a little bit of like the people here. I don't they're they're maybe they lack morals, but it's just it seems like it's a way for them to make money and survive rather than Evil. I, so I think we're. I think we're. I think we're in agreement. <laughs> like there's this pause, and then Saffron is like, "Okay, I, I think we're okay. I think actually no, we're we're yeah, I, we're good." I think yeah. The only question that we have to resolve is the scale, the scope of this. <laughs> and I start snickering at the pun. The scope of this operation. Mm -hmm. Are we only taking out the demand or are we also addressing the supply? Because usually there's fewer suppliers. In this yeah. case, maybe it's only the porcelain princes we need to worry about. I guess, I guess brother of the second hand is maybe an open question. Is this opportunism that he is undertaking with the help of Promotore? Or is this something that this settlement will latch on to whenever the opportunity arises and without and that then it seems kind of out of our hands? Well there's a few ways to go about it, I think. We can continue investigating. Or I could just ask my cat master here to uh, address he of the second hand quite quietly. There is, there is the open question of the power vacuum, though. Well, and obviously Ida isn't an option, but uh, what, was, what was her name, the leader that we met at the uh, island village? And I'm asking in character even though we do have to go back several sessions for this. <laughs> well, there's Icing Matilda on the Iron Pike, and there's um, Red, Madame Red Star at the Red Bear Village. 
Well, I, the, I was thinking specifically of icing Matilda because of how much closer Iron Pike seems mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. Know. But uh, Madam Red Bear, I, I didn't get bad vibes off of either of them, at least not in any massive way. My vote is taking up the princes. I like I like Saffron's idea. Cut it up. Cut it off at the head. I, I think uh, Sarko is definitely fine with that as well. Mm -hmm. We might need to follow up with some maintenance around here. I like that term, maintenance. Uh, per perhaps we are gardeners, if you will, and we just need to do some pruning from time to time. So concerning the, the vacuum and leadership, there is um, still um, Sister Mercy has no weakness. Uh, uh, so, sorry, uh, Sister Mercy is weakness and she's just in a pilgrimage. She will be back at some stage. And, uh, and the other one was sick. That was sick and incap incapacitated. Um, but you also remember that when um, Kuzui um, wanted to help the father, um, he of the second hand was uh, non-committal and, and brushed it away. So my, my question would be, what is your next move? Do you do you know where the porcelain walker is? It's, it's actually one walker with two feet. It's like a really big porcelain walker. Um, Well, I mean, we saw it on the way in, right? Yes. So why don't was, we up, so pack up a truck and head over there, bring grenades or whatever. I think we should wait them out until they come out and then just snipe them, you know, or, or assassinate them that way. Do we still have Austins with us? Yes. Is Austins present for this conversation? Uh-huh. What's Austin's reaction to us talking about how to end the slavery issue here? Um, yeah, I mean, Austin was listening to you all the time, following mm -hmm. your lead. Um, he will argue, though, look, Nida, we are, um, if you will, upholding the law on the street right we're not here to you know for regime change that is up to the people to decide um but we are about protecting people I mean, yes that is part of our mandate mm -hmm. so if i'm understanding what you're saying correctly you are also on board with killing the porcelain princes Yes, as a, um, it's a moral, morally dubious decision. I, I'd rather. You would not find it dubious if you had seen the broken line. I've heard about it. I, I read your report. Um, it's a charnel house. It's an abattoir. I want to give people the the choice. I want to say, you know, you are an adult. What do you want? These, these, this is the information. Follow, if you want to go to the slaughterhouse, you know, singing and praising the prophet, then this is your choice. If you want to break your chains, this is your choice. I'm, I'm killing predators on the street, not a despicable, um social structure i look over at sarko i'm not opposed to uh to taking out porcelain princes but overall i agree with him i hook my thumb at austin's um you you can't have a revolution if, if the people don't want to revolt so your idea is basically throwing a bunch of information into that tree like a grenade, closing the door and see what happens? Well, are we talking still about the, the Greenlanders or are we talking about a, a bigger context? 
I, I look over at Austin's. Have we saved them if we just turn them over to slavery? If we tell them it looks like you're headed for slavery and they say, and they shrug, taking the taking the agency away from them is its own kind of control too. Austin's nods. And right now I'm just thinking about that yellow lander that I saw all that time ago at the, uh, what was it, the, the wicker man? Yes, structure? the, um, exactly. The, that, that was way the hell back one. Uh-huh. And I'm just thinking about how I couldn't do anything. I couldn't buy her out of her contract. I couldn't like save her. Mm -hmm. All I could do start buy some guns and get out of there. Part of Serco's position too is that um, going after individual porcelain princes would feel good, but like his plan is to try to get rid of all of that permanently. Yeah, and and I'm not opposed to that either. I'm I'm right on board with getting rid of all of it permanently. But well, oh, totally. It's more that like that kind of affects uh, Sarko's like judgment as far as like how how critical it is to deal with this you know he sees it as this isn't chopping off the head of the snake this is chopping off one head of the hydra right um and he wants to kill the whole hydra that's that's his perspective so he's he's maybe a little bit more disaffected you would think about this than given the rest of his positions whether whether it's actually his plan is actually possible or it's sort of a you know heroic delusion <laughs> yeah okay so we take out the porcelain princes and then we spread information around here so that people understand what's going on and what he of the second hand is involved in. And maybe we talk to the Greenlanders and see how they feel about things. And then we, if they want to sell themselves into slavery, I, and I just close my eyes and shake my head. I just want some new guns. And those are real <laughs> guns. And I laugh at that. And it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll get you some guns. Don't worry about that. We'll get you guns. <laughs> okay. So um, Austin says that he will um, go with you, Nida, whatever your decision is. As the um, I don't know maybe uh, the older um, scope, you take the lead. Well, like I said, I'm in favor of killing the porcelain princes. Mm -hmm. Sarko and Austin's have both made very good points about the ethics inherent in. Well, everybody's made good points about the ethics inherent in taking out he of the second hand without someone else who's high enough up the food chain here to take over and not leave a power vacuum and make things worse. So I think, Nathan, if I'm understanding what you were saying correctly, you kind of want to just spread the information around and see if they decide to revolt. And if so, maybe support them in that effort. You're muted. Versus, uh, versus what alternative? Um, well, we have a number. Preemptively um, taking out. We, we could take hand. out he of the second hand very quietly or very loudly. Um, right. And we could deal with, you know, uh, Formatory and see mm -hmm. what we could do about the caravan there if they're engaged in slavery. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a lot noisier. I don't, I don't see any way around that without making noise. Mm -hmm. um, so... But it sounds like yeah. we're all on board with killing the porcelain princes. I, yeah, I think of those like the the what you were describing at first, right? With the give the information and see what how they react. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. Okay, what are you doing? I saffron. I think it like the, this conversation kind of comes together, and then saffron's like, "Well, the next step is the porcelain princes, but." I think we want to go into that engagement very prepared. We want to have 
terrain advantage and situation advantage, and we want to be able to take them out without too much fuss. They were both hanging out, like they were just both hanging out. They were not inside the. They were not inside the the um, porcelain walker. <clears throat> That's good. So it seems like they're feeling pretty comfortable. I think we should wait them out, see if they come out to have a smoke or something, and then mm -hmm. take them out from there. I mean, we're um, not going to win like going head to head with the walker. That, yeah, that would be one concern. The other concern is whether they have more allies somewhere in close proximity that we're not aware of, like the Redlander caravan guards who might be inclined to protect them as potential buyers. That would count, yeah. Mechanical question for you, Horst. Yes. Um, Nida's sniper rifle basically gives her an insta-kill once every 24 hours, correct? Correct. From, like, rude, ludicrous distances. Does Austin's have that same mechanical ability? Um, no. He's okay. an NPC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you understand why I needed to ask. Two porcelain yeah. princes, mm -hmm, two mm -hmm. scopes, two sniper rifles. That problem can be done real quick. <laughs> yes. So I, I think Saffron is mostly proposing just like, hey, let's play this very OSRE and set ourselves up for maximum chance of success and the least amount of risk uh, by putting in a little legwork ahead of time. Totally on board with that. So. What's the plan? Um, so you, you do know where they are. They're, yeah. they're uh, about like, uh, I don't know, an hour away to the east. And they're mm -hmm. hiding in a small, um, it's not a valley, but it's uh, it's in between a couple of hills. So, so I think Saffron is like, okay, the, the, I think the Saffron's like, okay, risks to this plan is one, the porcelain princes see us coming. We can work around that. Maybe we can build some camouflage. Maybe we can identify a particularly good route to get into sniping positions. Well, if we've got, if they're in between two hills, we can take them, take them from the high ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's like covered in forest or whatever. The contingency of if we don't get them from a distance is we might want to be prepared to get them close up. You know, grenade range. So that might involve having our snipers in one place and the rest of us somewhere else. Um, so and, while you're, oh, sorry, sorry, go on. And I was just, the other thing that Saffron was going to mention was, yeah, like maybe we want some trusted person who can alert us if the Redlander guards take off in defense. Mm -hmm. So talking about the guards, <clears throat> at this moment, um, there is uh, a couple of villagers and they are carrying um, crates to the... Um, to the floating barge. So it seems as if the, uh, the floating barge is loaded to leave. Do we do we know where the barge would go if it leaves yeah. or? Yeah, you do know. If you go to the character keeper um, and then on the map, and then you scroll all the down to map. Yeah, 240. Yeah. And um, you can We're see at that Jane Powell Bob. Yes, and that they they would follow the Red River to the road and then move south and then move west. And the um uh the porcelain um walker was uh, a, a little bit east of the road in, in the hills. Oh, okay. So they would potentially be going close to the yes. They would princes when they leave. Ask them. Uh-huh. 
Okay. And no, the 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 floating barges uh, would move east, and um, you know the the car your caravan, the cornflower caravan moves uh, west towards the Black City, and okay, you that's why I, I I thought you said that uh, the porcelain or the uh, floating barge was moving west. No, 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 they're, okay. they're moving east. Sorry, my misunderstanding. So yeah. Um, they're, they're slowly um, loading um, relatively big crates even um, onto the onto the barge and uh, so what do you do I guess it's a timing question of do we want to surreptitiously follow them and hope that they pass by the porcelain princes and stop being a concern or are we worried that they're on their way to meet up with the porcelain princes and by not moving fast we lose an opportunity i don't have a good read i could always offer to try to go on board with the uh, floating barge just to quote unquote scout ahead see if the guards would let me tag along for a little bit but we're gonna need you with your sniper rifle at the when we meet when we get to the porcelain princes we're not the three of us are gonna have a lot less chance of taking them out than you are you know oh, my plan is to drop off near where the porcelain princes are so I can both make sure that the caravan is proceeding on and also have eyes on the porcelain. Gotcha, gotcha. And like use some sort of like almost like Morse code using flashes from the, from the rifle scope mm -hmm. to communicate to, with you over distance. What if they don't move on though? What if they unpack whatever they're unpacking and wind up and backing up the porcelain printers? Well, like I said in chat, what is our problem and why does the solution involve grenades? <laughs> yeah, it's hmm. this seems it's an idea. Like a potentially good idea. I guess the the alternative would be move very fast and go take out the porcelain princes right now. Like we can it's move faster than the barge. I think we well the, the argument against that is what if we get there and it takes them a while to come outside where we pick them off? Yeah. You know, that, and then the Red Landers show up anyway. I mean, assuming that the Red Landers are coming. Yeah. So, do we all get on the Red Lander barge and blow it the fuck up? So, while you're talking, and uh, now the um, six of the nine Greenlanders uh, emerge from the Jade. Wow, but the, the rescued ones, um, led by former Toroda, <clears throat> and they um, they say goodbye to the uh, leaving three, uh, to, sorry, to the remaining three. Um, and um, former Dover gives like a, um, a hand gesture to Saffron, uh, and then boards the floating barge together with the other six Greenlanders. The saffron is like uh, okay, quiet, quiet. That's a very bad sign. That means the barge is going to the porcelain princess. With the Greenlanders as merchandise. I go inside the auto wagon mm -hmm. and emerge with about a dozen grenades on my <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's take out the princes first. Is the, the with, are those grenades meant for the barge? I am ready to go. Whenever I, at this point. Saffron, you seem you and Sarko seem to be 
the ones who are planning, you let me know who to shoot and when. Well, right now, Sarko is a bit a bit worried that that uh, there's enough uh, gung ho ness to to you know get the barge sorted. That like you know, blowing up the barge with the Greenlanders on it exactly. doesn't make us. It any does not solve that than, problem. Uh, no, no. But this might just mean we need to move fast on the princes. That's what I'm mm-hmm. saying. We need to go. Let's get in the truck and go now. Right. Okay, you you jump into the um, Redlander truck. Uh, the auto wagon and uh, Nida is driving. Um, oh. un- if there's going to be like a dex check or something like that in here for driving, um, let's see, I think Sarko has the best dex of us. No, Azure D does. I'll drive. Do you fit in the truck yet? <laughs> <laughs> Do I fit in the truck? Of course. I think you. You have to move the uh, the seat way to the back. Yeah. Like the, the best way would be to remove the seat and sit on the back seat. That that would be comfortable. Can I do that? Can we do that without? I mean, I'm happy yeah. to be. I ha- happy to be like the, that tall guy in the little car from The Simpsons. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Step around my ears. You know, that's fine. If we if, if time is of the essence, that's what I'll do. I, I think Sarko is handy enough with. Uh car parts to to get that seat that yeah all right moved yes okay let's go hop in <laughs> okay so um azure sits on the back seat um and uh the others squeeze in i, I think there's enough room in the um in the front of the truck actually for the uh the four of you um and you put the pedal to the what's it called metal to the yeah. Yes. Do we have anybody in the turret? Um, you can. Somebody can sit in the turret. Um, which oh, one? Yeah. Who wants to sit in the turret? So Austin sits uh, uh, on the shotgun seat and is already trying to find a good uh, radio station with music that pumps up, you know, the adrenaline. Is is using the turret like a dex thing? Probably. Yeah, I would say it's it's long range weapons. Yeah, well, I think it's it's AV, I guess. The tech value. Oh right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I mean, that suggests saffron. Sure. For AV eleven. I mean, because I, I, I like the control. I like the image of me being on the turret. So <laughs> I'm, I'm the prairie dog in the turret. Yeah. A cybernetic prairie dog in a um, gun turret? Yeah, sign in. Mm-hmm. A big sort of like extended expect, uh, inspector gadget arms. Right? <laughs> and sort of sort of make it look like riding one of those those like Harley Davidsons with the like, you know, yeah, the monkey grip. But tall monkey mm-hmm. grip. And nice. I don't have a t- I don't have a ton of other weaponry in general, so it's not a necessarily a bad idea to put me on the stationary gun. Don't you mm-hmm. have laser eyes though? You do, cool. yeah, yeah. That as well. Um, so, uh, Azure, I assume that you're trying to be as quick as possible, um, and you do drive on this gravel road uh, next to a um, a very deep canyon. Um, so, I think the um, the only question the question is not will you be quicker than the barge because you can look uh, back and the, uh, when the barge starts floating it's it's relatively slow um you mentioned a road on a ravine yes does the barge float on anything or does it need to have something underneath it to act as a for basically to, ha- to act as a repellent <laughs> Uh, that is a good question. Um, I do think that the um, the Hoover uh, barge has to be pulled by something. So I guess that um, I think so it's probably go ahead. Yeah. So um, I think that the um, that there have to be like two I don't know ponies or something pulling it. So uh, they ground underneath it. Yes. With this I mean, ravine, is there any way? 
for grenades to knock stuff loose to delay the barge's progress further? Um, yes, you can. You can partly collapse. You can collapse part of the mm -hmm. of the road if it's really close to the ravine. Or if we're far enough ahead, we could do. Yeah, we could do other kinds of sabotage too. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about blocking the roadway, not so much destroying it. Because yeah. we're gonna have to get back through there at some point. Uh huh. So if we yeah. like knock rocks down from the side of it, yeah, we, then we do have you know, She Hulk with us. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, you can see on the on the right side of the road uh, the occasional trees um, that you could cut down or, um, I, I guess, deroot if that is a word. Uh, unroot. Um, yeah, there, there are ways to block the street. What do you do? Sounds like a decent enough idea if there's something we can do relatively quick to buy a little extra time. <laughs> so, Azure, would you rather um, lift a couple of rocks or, you know, um, pull a tree out of the, the ground? I can pull trees out of the ground now? We'll see. <laughs> oh, I, I have like the strength of 14. Well, th there's the, the numeral strength and there's the narrative strength. Oh, okay. And yes, then I think it's important that I pull as many trees out as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's it's the um, lift gates. What is it called? Raise bars or something? Uh, um, bend bars, lift, lift gates. Yes, um, feet of a very strong uh, hero. So yeah, you. you um, how does it look like? Um, there's a there's a, um, a younger tree that would actually um, block the whole uh, road. Is it big enough that it would be a pain in the ass for them to move it? Yes. Okay. So I walk over to the tree. I look at I look back at the the team and I spit in my hands and I get down in a squat and uh, I grab it's got two roots that are kind of sticking out of the ground a little bit so I can use them as handholds mm -hmm. and then um, like you know in the Olympics like the Russian women weightlifters uh -huh. like I pull up like little bits of rock start coming off you can see my face is kind of turning purple and my veins are sticking out of my head like mm -hmm. out of my forehead. Um, and, you know, I'm like kind of rocking back and forth to get some leverage to kind of wiggle the first two roots out. And uh, then, you know, I'm about like a quarter way up, you know, like I'm standing, I'm about a quarter way up. And then the two roots come up out of the ground. And then I, you know, let out like a, a guttural, a guttural roar. And I, <laughs> I flip the rest of the tree out on the ground and like dirt goes everywhere. Um, and, uh, and it, you know, and, and then I drag it down across the road and then I come back up to the truck and I go like this with my hands, you know, cleaning off my hands. And I got a big smile on my face and my face is covered with dirt from all the uh, heavy lifting that I done did. Um, uh, will we be on our way? <laughs> I mean, you fun. You enjoyed Azure? I uh, didn't know I had it in me. I'm glad I do. And so Azure is climbing inside the uh, auto wagon again, and um, the wagon moves quickly uh, towards the um, the crossing. And then, um, when you reach the crossing, you know that the um, the porcelain walker is not far away. What do you do? Do you still speed towards the place as quickly as possible? Do you stop and, and start we walking? Stop and walk because we don't yeah. want to tip them off that our giant ass auto wagon is coming over a gravel road. Mm -hmm. And I do assume that you all move um, silently as silent as possible and yeah. sneakily. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the, the space where the... Um, you can't see the walkers from where you are, but you, you, you know exactly the spot. Uh, Hamish, I described it to you. Um, it is surrounded by um, a couple of hills. Um, and is your plan to climb one of the hills? Is it um, you try to sneak 
um, between two hills. What's the plan? Uh, and the hills, they are all um, you're covered with shrubbery and smaller trees. Do we want to split into two groups? Maybe have Austin's and I on Overwatch and... That's kind of what I was thinking is... Sure. Especially if they, you know, try to escape or whatever, having some of us down on the ground to throw grenades, hit them with laser eyes, that kind of thing. How, uh, how, in, in the balance, um, to what, to what, level would we uh you know take steps to try to keep these uh walkers maybe for ourselves or do we not care about that at all very valuable yeah 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 that's but for when sure. we sell them it's a ton of experience like yeah basically about a level okay uh, that, that's I kind of my was my not, leading too but i wanted to get a gut check when it's like i think the way i'm seeing this and i think our priorities here are Stopping the princes is more important. Mm -hmm. Staying alive is more important. Keeping the walkers mm -hmm. would be very nice, but not worth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tons of undue risk. Yeah. Right, yeah, not essential. We can walk out of here without making a ton of money because sure. we have a lot of money as is. Um, and sure. I would be okay with that. Word. So mm -hmm. that's the that's my risk calibration here. Totally. I was at, I was more checking to see if anybody in the group was like in a more like you know collateral damage doesn't matter. Take no ah, prisoners, okay. including you know just like leave it a smoking hole. But I didn't think so. But I wanted to yeah. get the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would definitely be easier to just throw a couple of grenades and make them uh, make the walker fall over which is definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems as everybody would be more interested in taking out the princess and, and stealing the, the walker. Yep. I'm still yeah. passing out grenades. Porcelain walkers, from, what, from my understanding and my sense of them, they're purely mechanical, right? They don't seem biomechanical. Um, yes, they are mechanical. They are um, they are actually vehicles. They are also they are also golem ones. So mm -hmm. you don't know which one this is. Uh, one would walk on their own accord, and the other has mm -hmm. to be Do we know if there's anyone else with the like? I don't uh, know when you guys passed by um, the porcelain princes. Did you like interact with him or just see that? Let the oh, these are porcelain walkers. There must be porcelain princes inside. Um, th this uh, particular walker, um, it, it was Hamish as a ghost, so he couldn't be seen, uh, but he also couldn't interact with his okay. uh, environment. So who was inside? Um, at the time when Hamish was there, the, the two um, porcelain princes were standing outside. Okay. And he didn't see anyone else when he was floating around as a ghost? No, he checked the whole camp out. Um, all right. Well, one one idea that uh, um, Sarko floats is, you know, he's been. We'll, we'll say that in the background of all the many times that he's been around and not doing much, that he's been experimenting with that full spectrum radiation blast, mm -hmm. and he thinks that he can he can make that radiation blast. You know, it's full spectrum, but he thinks maybe he can narrow that down, and just give it a a heady fatal dose of of you know, sort of set off a neutron bomb. Mm -hmm. a, a directed neutron bomb That's awesome. um, that will just sort of, you know, fry them, but but leave most everything else intact. Mm -hmm. So no EMP. Yeah, exactly. He thinks he can sort of like narrow down the band to sort of like just, you know, toast the organics or he could give it a shot. Thinking here that this could be the like once per day use of a slot thing, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if that's too powerful or not. I like that. Like an anti uh, EMP almost. Or mm -hmm. minus the MP. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so you were talking about splitting uh, NIDA and Austin's? If that makes sense to everyone. 
I mean, yeah, you can I think, at least get them in a crossfire that way. Yeah, you go up the hill, Definitely. up and over the hill, and we go around. So Nida and Austin, so when you climb up the hill, um, you can see um, the walker. And from the description of Hamish, um, he said that there was a campfire and like a big um, tent for, you know, like a, a small crew or something. Um, but the, the tent has been packed up. Uh, there's no, the, the campfire has been burned down. And the walker is still standing where it stood before. Um, but there's no sight of the princess. Uh, and um, you can see that there's like a front cabin of the walker where mm -hmm. there's like two laser um, turrets sticking out of the more very much like, uh, is it 80, 80s? And, and mm -hmm. um, but there are also um, like gel-shaped um, cabins on the side that looks like uh, like passenger cabins or, or maybe for transportation or something. Huh. Well, like I mentioned earlier when we were talking about doing this at long range and having Nida go ahead, I think I just pull out a mirror real quick and start flashing some signals to the others. Mm -hmm. You know, making sure to keep the flashes out of the line of sight of the walker. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like we may, we may need to actually go in at slightly more close quarters. But if this is okay with you, Horst, can I send Ajax in as a scout? Um, yes, into the camp or into the walker? Yes, camp first, then if there's no sign, into the walker. Um, I mean, cat. cat. Cats are weird. Yeah. Cats can climb the weirdest things. Um, I mean, I, I assume that you scout the the walker first for um, a, a way for Ajax to get in. Yeah, um, I'm looking through my scope. I mean, of course. Um, uh, I, I where you think is the entrance? I guess it was. It is under the. Uh, there's an entrance to the uh, to the front cabin. Uh, let's say under the jaw, so to speak. Yeah, and there's um, probably also like some sort of top compartment or top lid that people can yes, up out of. Definitely. Um, and then there's in the back. I would assume um, there must be like a big one for uh, tr like the, the thing is obviously hollow and can transport things. Mm -hmm. uh, so there must be um, some kind of entrance, like and a then they are hatch. like a cargo hatch indeed, yeah. uh, which okay. is in the back. And then then these scale shaped um, cabins, the four of them, they have their separate entrances as well. So they are in total, I guess, seven. Okay, but they're all closed. Hmm. Well, that's a bit of a problem. I mean, cats can climb lots of things, but they can't open doors, or at least not doors with knobs or hatches or latches. Some cats can open, you know, doors. With well, hatches. you know, like a latch, yeah. But yes, yeah. Ajax, um, Ajax does have, uh, if I remember correctly, hands. Um, like cat lords have hands; they have opposable mm. thumbs. Okay. So. Oh. Yeah, in the absence of anyone else using a skill or ability or spell or something like that, I'll just ask Ajax to go wander around the camp looking like a normal cat. Mm -hmm. And what kind of signal did you signal to um, uh, Saffron, Azure, and Sarko? No princes visible. No princes, in the, you know, just no princes visible. So I don't have a line of sight on anything. I have, there's nothing I can shoot. And um, Saffron, Azure, and Saka, what do you do? Do you still sneak uh, into the, the clearing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, or we get like right onto the edge. Uh, and you can see that there are also like bushes and trees um, to get even closer where I can hide behind. Um, 
do think that at least, I mean, if you really want to be super stealthy, but still get closer, you would probably have to roll dexterity to, um, to stay hidden. But depending on how close you want to get, if you, if you still, if you are, you know, if you're still in the outer perimeter, perimeter um, but uh, mm -hmm. and hidden behind a tree, that's totally okay. There's no role involved. But if you want to get closer, that's seems... how close, close enough. To me, <clears throat> yeah, but... how close is outer perimeter ish? Uh, to the walker, I, I want to say it's like 20 meters. Oh, yeah, I think that's close enough yeah, for now. That sounds fine for now. Azure looks at the at both of them and smiles. And like, there's like a big, there's a big bush with like a, with a real, like with a, with a trunk, you know, and she walks over to it. She spits into her hands and she pulls it up by the roots and she mm -hmm. does the symbol. It puts her finger over her mouth <coughs> and she tries to get as close as possible. And I have, some pretty, I have pretty metal, good guys. So is that Metal Gear Solid shit? Is it? I don't know. I've never played Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Instead of a box, it's a bush. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think in in reality, people would realize that the box is in a completely different uh, position afterwards than before. But I mean, but it's uh, a bush. Too, I mean, it's, it's a, a bunch of bushes, right? It's a bush. It's not out of place. Um, like the. The inner circle around the uh, the actual camp is the the, the ground is pretty um, like stamped on. I don't know what it's called, um, but it's uh, there's no vegetation. So in the in the inner um, in the inner circle, the bush would definitely stick out. Um, but to be to be hidden where you are, this is perfect. Uh, but do you want to? You do want to get closer, I guess. Uh, yeah. So that that would be then. I don't know even if it is a curse. It's a. It's a yeah, deck. it's probably. Yeah, it's probably a dex check. All right. Yeah. And if, you're, if you're, one of us is going to try, it can be Azure. Right. Well, yes. I'm figuring I've got like you know the best chance to get closer. Yeah. And I want to say because of your. Uh, Metal Gear Solid reference, you get advantage. Sorry, I just rolled the three, so I'm good. You're good in, in any case. Um, so what's your goal? You can get um, under the um, under the walker itself, Ooh. where they can't see you. Great. I'll do that. Um, and you can see that there's a cat walking over. Pretty so martial I uh, yeah, well, Ajax, right? Obviously. <clears throat> okay. Um, I hadn't really thought this far <laughs> to get me. <laughs> uh, now we wait. I a, I didn't think I would get so close to the walker. Um, mm -hmm. in second. I mean. You don't have to. If you say you stopped halfway, that is also cool for me. No, no, no. Being under the walker is totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there a way I could climb up the walker? Is there like a ladder with access? Um, yeah, you can definitely climb up the um, the leg. Actually, that, that there are these um, metal um, handles. Right. Now, is that like would that leave me exposed to um, to like? cameras or, or the, the side carts where people could see me? Uh, if there were cameras, then yes. Um, but what, what you have seen is like the, um, um, it's not called a window in a car. What is it called? The wind screen, the windshield, uh, the windshield yeah. uh, wouldn't uh, allow them to see you. It wouldn't? No. Okay. Because it's, it's to the front. All right. So I go. Clap my hands. I try to get, and I, you know, kind of make yeah, a step Ajax, to get Ajax to come over to me. Yes, Ajax jumps on your shoulder. And so, like Nathan, I climb up the rungs of the ladder. Uh, I look for the, uh, I look for the hatch. Mm -hmm. I open it. Um, yes. You open it. 
um, there's um, like a, um, I don't know what the smell is. It is definitely, it smells a bit like um, dried meat and patchouli, I guess, uh, that comes from the inside. The inside of the, uh, the walker is pretty dark and then there's on the front, there's um, the lights of the consoles and you hear, what the fuck? And somebody turns around. Um, so is that a good moment to roll initiative maybe? I mean, you didn't uh, try well, to be. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to open the hatch. Like, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I was trying. Basically, what I wanted to do is open it just enough to throw the cat in. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, you check the um, the opening mechanism, and it does open. Um, so you open up the hatch, and you throw the cat in. So um, let me just pause for a second. I will have to check what because neither you have oh you have ajax actually as active oh yep. oh and oh because you have two slots at the moment i think i actually have more than that um yeah i've got two slots active yeah you you can have two slots active because you're um you're insanely high level that is true so um you throw ajax in and you still hear what the um, and let's see, I, what do you guys think is the most reasonable? There's two, uh, porcelain princes with, um, pretty good reflexes actually. Uh, and there's also, a, a cat lord, um, that probably has the surprise on, uh, his side. Is that a fortune roll? I think it's probably... In Whitehack, it's very often the character roles. So that would be neither. I mean, you can take up, I, I would assume that you'll be able to take one out uh, in any case, but we want to see does Ajax get hurt, for example? And is neither okay with a cat being thrown in? I, I think, one, I'm probably hearing a lot from Ajax about seriously clicking his tongue at me. How dare he type stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of throwing Ajax in, I think it's probably more along the lines of you open the cat, uh, you open the hatch a little bit and Ajax kind of jumps in. Yeah, we have a lot probably. of black kitties in this chat. <laughs> yes, the second already. Throwing cats is never, is never a good idea because they always resist. So, yeah. Um, so in terms of that, improve your technique. Do we want to do something more along the lines of having Azure right there as backup for Ajax? And then can Ajax use his narcotic tail darts ability to take out both princes? I don't think both. Uh, I, I do think like a reasonable thing would be uh, they take one out and then there's the danger of the other one shooting the cat is, is how I see it. Because you have the Ajax can do the things that he can do and, and shooting dart Darts is one of the things. Um, so that would be your one youth per, use per day for doing something pretty heroic. Uh, and then it's just um, Prince against Cat, I guess. Azure, did you want to... So... If this is cool with you, Horst, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you, Abe, if Ajax makes... A, a snarling yowl sound would that be enough azure to make you realize you needed to jump in like literally jump into this uh porcelain walker and start fighting um uh what well horse would i be able to hear anything once the lid is closed um yeah i want to say yes all right yeah i'll totally jump down there and kick ass Okay. Okay, so in um, um, NIDA, what you hear is, what the hell from, uh, from Ajax? That was not the plan at all. Uh, and then, ouch! Uh, and Azure, when you open the, uh, the hatch, you can see that one of the porcelain princes um, is, let me think. So, um, Ajax is 
is um, sitting on them, like attached to them with their uh, with uh, his claws, and uh, with the um, the stinger trying to poke into the um, into the suit, which is, as you remember, some kind of astronaut suit trying to find um, purchase. Um, while the other was aiming at Ajax, but at the moment where you um, you open the hatch, um, he's aiming at you. So okay. I guess now, yes. So I guess now we roll initiative to see who's shooting first. All right. Um, so I don't have a dice roller open, but let me just roll for your party. So we do. Uh, I forget with white hack is it just a d twenty roll? It's or just a flat d six, and some some characters have okay. um, lost. Uh, some characters have like plus one or something. Do the d six. Let's go. I have a five. Ah, crap. What you got? Sarko got a one. Got a four. So he's shooting first. Um, and then normally what we do is we do group uh, initiative. So we take uh, we take Azure's four, in which case, um, so um, Sarko, you can shoot as well. Um, but I want to say um, I need to roll the AV, obviously. Let's see, D20. Let's go. This is a 10, and that is way under their um, AV of 15. And I guess above your your um, armor class. Yes. So a porcelain pistol, I think, does D12. Is that true? Um, Who said it's on my character sheet? Uh, weapons and Porcelain gun. pistol D6, 2D6. 2D6, which is better than D12 even. So can you uh, can you survive this? Four. Uh, this is ten damage. Probably Actually. not. Holy nope, shit! I got eight. So um, what we do now is there are two ways to do this. Um, once per fight, I think um, you can try to uh, roll a saving throw. Or a con check, whichever is better, to negate uh, damage. Yes, um, oh, I'll do con. Uh, so let's see. There's one weird damage and death. Characters have a specific option. Once per battle, when an attack would damage them, they have the option to save. A successful save reduces the damage by d6 points. If the save fails, however, the character takes full damage from the attack. Um, if she gets negative HP, she dies. When you would save to reduce damage or to avoid death, you can make a constitution task roll instead to the same effect. Okay, so a roll under your constitution, which is? Pray for me, people. Pray. Yes, I did it. Nice, and so uh, you then roll a d6 and subtract that from the damage. Yes, so that's five is, damage. Five damage, that's way better. So I think what we see is um, you, you open up the hatch, you see the cat attached to the other uh, prince, uh, the porcelain prince with their, um, you know, with their a weird expressionless mask turns around and just shoots you. Um, and I guess it's probably um, somewhere in the shoulder. It's like a pretty um, hefty damage. Um, and I, I would assume that you probably, you, you, I mean, you opened the hatch with one arm. You have to hold yourself with the second arm. So now you have to draw your gun. So that's probably why you are later than the, the right. friends. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of gun do you have? I don't think it, uh, a shotgun would work because you need two uh, two hands. I would assume. It's, well, it's a sawed-off shotgun. Um, yeah, that's it's small enough probably to shoot with one. But buckshot and a cat don't really go very well together, right? If you miss, yes. Um, and then what do I have to roll? Uh, my your AV. 
my AV is 11. Uh, Jesus. Um, okay, so how much damage would I take if I used my Twitching Puppet spell? Um, let's see. I think uh, you definitely would have to concentrate first. You can't do it, um, you know, in, in combat. Uh, just. It wouldn't be suitable in this particular instance. Uh, I would say so. Okay. Um, you could also, um, I mean, uh, Sarko is probably sh shooting at the same time. We could wait what he's doing. All right. So, Sarko, I think your plan was to fry them inside, which would obviously mean that both Ajax and Azure would take damage as well. Yeah, if they're all in there right now, um, I, I I think Sarko is going to like hold off because he's not going to be able to, you know, see who's who in there, um, and I, I don't think it's worth the risk per se while and they're Saffron. all in there. Saffron? I mean, uh, Nida asked if she could shoot through the wind shield uh, when uh, wind shield. I mean, I mean, the scope does do thermal and night vision, which is why I ask. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you see four warm shapes inside. One of which well, is I guess, presumably cat-shaped. Yeah, I guess you see three and then one hanging half outside. Okay. Um. Saffron, do you have any ideas at this point? Because, I, I mean, if, if you want to jump in on this, I don't want to, like, use an insta-kill special. I I don't have a great move on Saffron's mm. side of things. So, um, okay. If, it's... if Ajax and um, who else is in there? Azure? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They out. I can... You know, blast them, but uh, until then, I'm probably just gonna want wait and wait and watch. I mean, Sako, you could sh communicate that to uh, Azure, she would definitely hear that you're not that far away. And if okay. Azure hears it, mm -hmm. I do have that telepathic link with Ajax, and I could say, Get the hell out of there, cat. Is it is it that dire? Do I know that it's going badly? You know, or that it's you're hearing gunshots, that's usually not good. Well, yeah, sure, but I don't know. It's like, is that the Cool, you got him, but you know what I mean? Is it like, I mean, you do see that uh, Azure is hanging outside uh, on the ladder and that mm -hmm. she got just uh, hit by uh, some kind of ray gun. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, oh, well, sure, then yeah, if I if I can see that and it's in a you know, then yeah, I'll shout that if if you can get out there, I can try to try to you know, fry him as best as I can, yeah, we can uh -huh. at least give cover. Mm -hmm. I like could, that idea. Would it be possible for me to um, bum rush the guy and disarm him? Um, I want to say no, because you're, you're hanging, the way I see it, you're hanging outside. What you first would have to go is to drag your um, injured ass inside the cabin, try to dodge like the, the second shot probably, and then bum rush in uh, next. Uh, in the next round. <clears throat> All right. So basically, the op the other option is shooting him with a shotgun. Yeah, shooting him from where you're hanging, um, getting inside and trying to get into cover and do something else next time, or you know, let go, take maybe Ajax with you, and hope that Zarko has, um, you know, has a blast. Yeah, that seems like probably the sanest move. I wasn't really expecting to get shot really badly. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't so really you, think through any of this, so sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, you see Ajax um, like jumping more or less into your face and and holding, um, trying to um, to hold tight to you. Being incredibly strong, I do a one arm pull up <laughs> and try to uh -huh. escape. Slam the door shut behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Saffron Sarko. Neither. Well, I thought we were going with Sarko's plan to kind of. Yeah, are you all clear? Yeah, we're clear now. 
Well, I'm still up on the uh, hill. So, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so what do I need to do? Like, there's there's the the version of of using the the spell for straight damage, and then there's the like deft thing of the once per day exceptional use. So I don't know what we would need to negotiate for the latter. I, I think. Um, so let me let me think. I, I, I would say that doing the d10 straight to a, a creature or a thing is your one time use. There's no negotiation or anything. That's just what the deft does. Mm. Um, but I do think that you're using your um, ability in a, in a slightly different way. You want to channel the uh, the re radiation blast in a way that only fries organic material and leaves the thing. Mm -hmm. in. So um, I, I always think that is more like a roll. Okay. Do you agree? Uh, maybe. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit fuzzy. It's been a long enough time since I've, I've messed around with white hack that I can't remember how much you can get out of your, out of the, uh, the once per day. Yeah, the, the once per day success. thing is, is normally out of success of something like incredible. If it's, um, it's something acrobatics or something, it, it is what Spider-Man would do. Also, you know, it's not, it's a superhuman feat. Okay. Um, but I feel like shooting rays out of your hands or something is already a superhuman feat. So, okay. so that is the, and then it. using it in a um, in a super specific way, I would say requires a roll. And then the only thing is, what would it be? I mean, where does the power come from? Probably something with your mind, rather. Sure. Than yeah, I I would understand that, especially with the way that like even though we're not using the like uh, UVG system, that the most spells cost some sort of like HP or something. I mean, um, spells in White Hack also use um, okay. HP. Um, so th this is something. It's a bit boring that we have the the meta discussion at this uh, very moment. I I would um, say you could also. Um, you know, use HP to make this a spell in the same way Azure, mm -hmm. Azure's, um, uh, what is it called? Like the, 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 the twitchy puppet or whatever mm -hmm. that works. Uh, and then we had just have to, to um, negotiate what is the normal cost. So the lowest cost is one. Um, I think because you, you deal um, damage, the, the cost would be D6. Mm. And and um, because you you want to use it in a very special circumstances, I want to say it's D6 plus 2. Do you have that much HP? Uh, if I roll low, I have 5 HP. Oh, okay. So you can't, actually, because you can't kill yourself. Um, so okay. you would then have to do something to lower the cost, which is um, getting closer, um, concentrate mm -hmm. longer, um, use some kind of uh, material uh, to sure. To it. I think I think I was looking to see uh, what what's handy, and I think that one thing that seems somewhat thematically similar is that green brick that had come up uh, one yeah. time before. Um, I know I'd been envisioning it as as radiation adjacent, so maybe I can just use up whatever's in it, and it's toast. It's you know, it's nice. a dead brick. Um, I do remember that you used the brick already um, mm -hmm. in the um, in the crystal yep. dungeon, but you didn't use it up at that time. It just shrunk a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so now you have uh, like a soap-sized um, part of the brick, and uh, how do you use it to channel your radiate radiation blast? Uh... You know, you say it's soap sized. Um, maybe part of part of the the HP drain is you know like I just like squeeze it in my fist until it's completely gone, and some mm -hmm. some remnant of it is probably in my body, and that's how part of the reason why I've taken damage. Nice. And how does where where does it shoot out? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I I. I think it's it's sort of a classic, you know, in one hand and out the other. <laughs> the, the 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 brick is in one hand and you you shoot it out of the other. Cool. Um, 
and you uh, you see that the um, what what kind of ray is it? How do we have to um, visualize that? Is it like the color of the rainbow, prismatic? Uh, I think that it's it's some um, you know with the the idea of of it being in some end of the spectrum that is like you know fatal radiation. I think it's it's uh, we'll say it looking through the beam like the beam itself has no color but some side effect of it of like if you're looking through the beam everything is like a negative image mm, right cool. nice. uh, and that's that beam hits the um, the cabin um and um there's no obvious uh effect it just goes through it uh go, goes through the cabin and on the uh, out the other side um, but let's see what kind of damage it does inside. Oh, how much damage do I take here? Um, a D6. Uh, that's still too much, I think. Oh, shit. Uh, um, so what is the, the, the next I5. increment? I-5. Uh, the next increment would be a D6 minus 2. Yeah, that's that's possible. Uh, I rolled a four, so I'll take two. Mm -hmm. And how much damage do you deal? Uh, do I roll the d10 now? Yes. So, okay, I I may be confused. I um, The other alternative would have been for me to just roll the d10 my once per day thing. And then you shoot against the, um, at the cabin, but I was uh, envisioning that you you shoot the, the cabin, but you only want to damage the the, the yeah, okay. okay, got it. Sorry. Uh, seven. Interesting. Um, obviously, in good old OSR fashion, I haven't rolled uh, their XP until the last moment. They are H D five. So let's see how much they have. Oh, there are two ones and a two. Uh, so that's eight, ten, twelve. How much damage did you get? Give? I rolled seven. Seven. All right. Um, so then there's Seferin who also can do something, and neither. Still the first round. So you do see the, um, the the ray going through the cabin, and you can see that the head is now moving in the direction of Sarko. Yeah, I think if the walker is activating, mm -hmm. I would probably get in position to machine interface it. Cool. To jack into it so um you would use that round to get uh do you want to get close to do it or do you want to um, i think i need wide? to be close i think that that feels more right yeah for this. um nice so you you're obviously pretty quick so you run over to the to the walker mm -hmm. and kind of like jump on one of the legs or something is kind of how I'm nice. Yeah. Yes, uh, because it is already starting to move. And uh, neither what do you do? I mean, neither you probably uh, you communicated with Ajax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously, there's somebody in the cockpit of this thing now, right? Yes. And they have a windshield. Yes, that's see through. Um, yeah, I guess it's it's probably uh, just as in the ad ads. It's pretty um, narrow, but it is still yeah. see through. Yeah, they're down. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. insta kill them. I'm not gonna roll. I don't. You know, it's like I'm not gonna chance Sarko taking damage. They're down. So okay. there's one porcelain prince remaining. Um, but actually, the other porcelain prince is um, paralyzed. is paralyzed. So uh, I guess, uh, Saffron, you arrive at the leg. The leg moved. You hear a shot. Mm -hmm. The the plasma goes through the windshield. Uh, Nida, you can see um, uh, that the 
the you know the porcelain mask breaks and then there's um all kinds of goo coming out the other side um and the walker stops moving 